right, welcome back to another episode of Learning Lots. I'm Jesse. I'm Bree. And we're Learning, Learning Lots. This episode is about <laughs> guilty pleasures. Ooh. And what does it mean? I've spent a solid week thinking about it. I was like, it's pleasures that you feel guilty that you like, or you like, you feel guilty that you like them. Yeah. Okay. And that was a great episode. Thanks for coming through. (laughs) So learn that. (laughs) Learning lots. Learning lots. Bree and Jesse are learning lots. They learn so much their heads will grow. There won't be anything they don't know. They'll make Einstein look like a stupid mouse. Pleasure is pleasure, especially in the times that we're currently living in. If mm-hmm. there's something that you enjoy doing, you should enjoy it mm-hmm. fully. And you don't need to feel guilty for things that you like to do. As long as it's not harming people. Yes, very important. But there are a few little things for each of us that we like to do and keep to ourselves. Until this moment, let's dive into our personal guilty pleasures. Yes, mine Oh, I can't believe I'm saying this so publicly. Mine is my encyclopedic knowledge of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Mm -hmm. I have seen every episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Oh, God, I'm breathing for you just letting that out. Years spent watching this show with so much guilt and shame tied to it. Mm -hmm. So much so that if it comes up in conversation at work, I will either pretend I don't know what they're talking about or I will excuse myself and walk away, (laughs) which I have done multiple times. Let it out, Jesse. Let yeah. it out. There's other people out there that are like nodding in their cars or yes. washing the dishes right now going, yes, me too. Yes. I'm happy we get to talk about this. Yeah. Do you have any guilty pleasures? Not a one. Oh. But let me state. Let the record show. Please. I love a reality TV show. I think that I enjoy feeling a little bit of guilt in the watching of the reality oh, TV. She's naughty. I do. Um, I hide that I watch it from my boyfriend. Uh, How I, do you do that? iPad. Yeah. First thing in the morning. First thing in the morning before he's woken. Still with headphones and an iPad. Uh So, so shameful. Like I won't even put it on the TV. And if, you know, now Apple TV loves to say, would you like to continue watching? Yeah. So, you know, I'm always like, I don't know why Meredith Verzett is on there. I have no idea. Let's go back to that very inspirational sports dog we were watching earlier. I have no idea why Meredith first is back on. <laughs> Max was able to use my Keeping Up with the Kardashians obsession uh, to get me into having a huge TV in our house. Because mm-hmm. I had never lived with a very big TV. But then when we moved in together, he wanted to have this giant TV. And right off the bat, I was like, but in the m- main room we spend our time in, like we don't have a, a, a second living room. I don't want quarter of our walls to be covered in a television and he put on keeping up with the kardashians and i was sold what about uh, another one food Ooh, i could spend a long time talking about this i want to be the first one to eat something what does that mean what do you mean what does that mean have you ever opened up a hummus and been just delighted that you're the first one to dig in oh i thought you meant I don't the first be... to try a new food no i just <laughs> i want like the first first to... dibs First, to stick a spoon in the peanut butter or the mm. the ice cream. Yeah, if I'm first, first on the ice cream, there won't be a second. Oh, and then another one that I think we share, a guilty pleasure that we share, is dissecting pop lyrics. I do love reading too far into pop lyrics. Yes. Your hair falls into perfect place like dominoes. Oh, yeah, your hair falling into place like dominoes. Do dominoes fall into, into perfect place? Fa- pa- place? place? Yes, well, it depends. If it's like a Rube Goldberg, if you're trying to... But they scatter. But it could be perfect. I mean, they have to fall perfectly to continue to fall. Oh, okay. I'm glad we went deeper on that because I, I never quite understood. We spend a lot of time talking about the lyrics and pop songs and what they mean. And like also like daydreaming about how they were written, like what the scenario yeah. was that they were written in. What the where the- and the how. Who are they about? Uh, and I get a lot of pleasure out of that. One more guilty pleasure I have is fishing for compliments. I've noticed I really, I do like fish. I love a compliment and sometimes I'll bring it out of someone. Oh, interesting. You get a, so you get like a deeper pleasure in pulling the compliment out. Oh. Or just like teeing it up. I think I'd prefer not to have to tee it up or pull it out, but I will fish for compliments to get the compliment. Interesting. The compliment is my guilty pleasure. I was so nervous about that scene because I only got the script the morning of. 
And then people will be like, you did? Oh my, I had no, you're the best actor I've ever met. And I'm like, oh me, but I only tried my hardest. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's dirty. I kind of like it. I mean, you're getting what you want. You're a woman who's out there getting (laughs) what she wants. Give me my compliments. Yes. So we asked our Learning Lots followers and a handful of our friends, what are your guilty pleasures? Mm -hmm. Some people brought up things like lying about being sick to get out of something. That that's incredible. Um, obviously, posting flattering pictures. I didn't even realize the depth of this. Posting flattering pictures from years ago on their dating app. Yeah, like trying to represent yourself as a hotter, younger version on your dating wow. profile. Wow, 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 wow. Which I think most people do. Yeah, I think that's. I mean, well, I, I mean, some of the photos I post on Instagram are from Dec- weeks decades ago. old. <laughs> weeks ago, I've used way more skincare since then, so it's. It's not right that I do that. I shouldn't (laughs) hang on to them. Um, Subtly stealing a a roommate's food by only taking a few bites at a time. Did you interview my past roommates to get that one? Because (laughs) I've lived that. Drinking juice out of the container instead of getting a glass. Oh, I love that one. One person wrote they like to sleep in while their partner gets up with their baby and toddler. (laughs) Oh, I loved that we actually got a couple women said that they enjoy plucking their nipple hairs. Yeah, that's fascinating. And we were talking about it. Why would that be a guilty pleasure? And then I realized it might be because they feel guilty for how much pleasure they get out of plucking their Right. And that's when hairs. I started to understand what this episode was about. Because once again, <laughs> this was this was your inception and I'm here along for the ride. I'm co piloting on the on the journey of guilty pleasures because I live in a in a world of structure. Oh, lucky you. (laughs) Lucky, Brie. One friend admitted to having separate Instagram accounts uh, that she uses for stalking her exes and her ex's new girlfriend. I love that. I don't know what that would be like because I would never do that. A lot of people mentioned online shopping, late night impulse buys or things they collect. Mm -hmm. I heard from multiple people that they limit a specific guilty pleasure to being in the airport. Mm -hmm. One person... We won't say whom. It's <laughs> your assistant, Laura. She said that she and enjoyed... you doxing people on this. On, so far, on the... Laura's the only person I've doxed given people credit on the to her guilt. <laughs> yeah, I love that you've kept everyone anonymous except my assistant. It was too fun. Okay. Uh, she said that she loves eating McDonald's, but she only eats it when she sees one in an airport. It's so interesting because I love that too, but I only want breakfast. Hash browns. I want the hash brown and I want the McMuffin, obviously. Um, someone else said that they read tabloid magazines on plane. Another person said... Oh, eavesdropping on people in airports or on the subway. That That's me for sure. I I get a lot of pleasure out of that, which is part of why like, I have fought tooth and nail to stay anonymous when I'm out in the world. So you can eavesdrop better. That was my biggest fear. I was like, if I become famous, then how will I be able to listen to people's conversations? <laughs> I'm such a no- nosy eavesdropper. I've had friends before who are like, you can just stare at people and they don't stare back at you. It's a dream come true. I it's honestly it. a dream come true to be to just like for a brief moment to like participate in somebody else's life. Okay, so. People feel guilty about how they entertain themselves, pop music, video games, YouTube rabbit holes, binge watching true crime shows, Lifetime movies, Law and Order SVU specifically, the Hallmark Channel. Oh, God. And reality TV. Absolutely love all of these. And um, some people mentioned watching the same show over and over and over instead of finding something new. That is 100 percent me with The Office. I've watched it three times through during the pandemic. And I think a big part of that actually isn't what they do, but how much time they spend doing it. Mm -hmm. Like the Scream Time app recently pointed out to me how much time I spend playing Tetris on my phone. It's a lot. And I started to like tally up how much time I've spent watching the Kardashians and immediately correlated it with time I could have spent becoming a smarter person. Who's to say you're not being a smarter person? And I think the same thing can be said about food. Like it's not necessarily what you're eating, but how much of it you're eating, maybe. Like countless people We're mentioning candy, chocolate, french fries, other junk foods. Mm. Someone said brownie in a cup. (laughs) You just what's that? Just putting brownie mix in a cup with some water and then eating it as dough. Oh, that's genius. (laughs) I didn't know that was a possibility. I never knew. (laughs) Uh, Those thick (gasps) grocery store frosted sugar cookies everyone dislikes. Who dislikes those? No one dislikes them. It's like we're all lying. They wrote it's like a lump of flour and frosting. It is. Which is a perfect description. It's perfect. I love those cookies. I love those cookies. (laughs) Um, One Michelin starred chef I follow said Dairy Queen. Incredible. Did you get the specific order or? Their Dairy Queen order? No, but I'll follow up with you. Thank you. 
A few people approach the question from a moralistic point of view. My mom said that she feels guilty for air conditioning. God, your mom would say that. Do you want to read the quote? I'm shaken. This is a text message that she sent me when I asked her what her guilty pleasure is. Okay. Though air conditioning is pretty much everywhere nowadays, and I wouldn't want to drive in California in the summer without it, it only became commonplace after World War II. My mom casually uses the word commonplace. (laughs) What about World War II? Well, yeah. So, for most of human history, we endured the heat without it. Air conditioning that gets its energy from fossil fuels is just one more thing adding to our climate crisis, and I know I shouldn't use it and don't in fact need it, but I do run the air conditioner. (laughs) Your mom is a saint. And then my friend Charlotte Nickdow said, fried chicken. I actually do feel guilty about that. I guess I feel like, for me personally, eating meat is unnecessary. I can live a very happy life without that pleasure, and when I do have it, I'm contributing to something I don't like. I'm trying to be more at peace with the fact that I can't be perfect with my morals all the time. And part of that is being okay with other people knowing I mess up sometimes. Mm. Which got me thinking Uh that maybe the guilt and guilty pleasure is really the knowing that what you're doing isn't necessarily good for you or the world. It's not like tangibly productive. You're not making Mm. money off of it. But whatever it is, it's bringing you pleasure. Mm, That's interesting. Yes, because I've been struggling with what we're actually talking about. And that makes sense to me. The things that just give you joy but aren't part of, like, the culture of productivity. Exactly. Mm. So, like, the majority of what we've been doing in the last year while all of us are stuck away from, you know, the the obvious ways that we know how to be productive. Interesting. Interesting. But we'll get into it. That's why we have two incredible guests to discuss this further. Um, And so here we go. Our first guest. Our guest is Mariah Smith. She's a writer, comedian, and producer. She's well known for her pop culture knowledge and has been writing about the Kardashians for over five years. In her wildly popular column, Keeping Up with the Continuity Errors, she explores the production inconsistencies on the family's shows. On her podcast, Spectacle, the unscripted history of reality TV. I love how you said that. Spectacle. Spectacle. Spectacle, the unscripted history of reality TV. Mariah dissects the history of reality TV and how it has shaped our culture. Oh, Mariah Smith, welcome to the pod. Thank God. Hello. Thank you for having me. We are here to discuss guilty pleasures, which may just, in fact, be pleasures. Yes. Nothing is guilty about it. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you, you approach reality TV with a very academic point of view. When did you first start to look at what you were watching with such a critical eye? Well, what's very interesting is my dad and mother are both in academia. And Growing up, my dad was a professor and we were allowed to watch anything we wanted to watch when we were growing up, as long as we had a discussion about it. So I was watching like Jawbreaker, Wild Thing, MTV Spring Break, the Baby Got Back video. I remember we begged him to watch it, but he was like, what did you learn about how women are treated and about how women's bodies are viewed by men and how, you know, the male gaze and stuff like that. He was adamant that you learned as much from entertainment as you do from books and other, you know, forms of education. So it has always been ingrained into my system. And it's no shock that two of the three of my sisters, all three of us are in some way involved in media and entertainment. So it's really shaped who we are as people. Do you remember a moment when you realized that you could turn this into a career? I was working as a production assistant on the reboot of Best Week Ever. And I was like sitting in edits all day. And as a PA, it was just like grunt work. But I was, I, I've always been very keen to details. And I was assigned the shows Keeping Up with the Kardashians and the Steve Harvey show. The Kardashians, I was like just paying such close attention to it. And I was like, wow, there's something here to be written about, about how they're, sort of distorting reality on this reality show so we're like what can I do with that and I did it as a joke and I sent it to my friends and I was like oh five of my friends will read this so I sent it to by the end of the week 10,000 people had read it and I had to keep doing it so I was like oh this is a thing I guess what I've always been interested in can be a mini career so that's how I sort of fell into it uh is there anything that you wish everyone knew about reality tv It's funny. I mean, people don't realize just how funny reality TV is. Kristen Page on Married at First Sight, how tragic his behavior is. But you have to laugh. Like, there, it it is humor at its finest. It is, like, when I study comedy, it's like learning about clowning and just by being, you have to learn how to be funny by just being you. And that's what the best reality TV stars do especially the women of Real Housewives of Atlanta, like Portia uh, is, Portia Williams is 
funnier than Tiffany Haddish. Like that is just a fact, but she doesn't get credit for it because she's not a professional comedian. <laughs> I love that. Um, okay. Yeah, but oh wait, that that's actually something we wanted to talk about is like how people hold different. They were like, well, reality TV goes in the trash bucket, right. but I think there is something important, and we've we've talked about this with pop music too. Um, mm-hmm. I talk about this with video games that there's this idea that like the mainstream is bad, and that like it's only cool if you like the like rarities and like the thing that's hard to watch and like. Listen, I love something that's difficult to watch. Give give me a three hour long subtitle black and white movie. I want that. I want to be in that lane. But also, like, why can't we say that reality TV is amazing and helping us in some way? It must be because so many people are watching it. That is exactly how I feel. Like, I feel like pop music, it's popular music. Like, these are things that people who are more educated than me in the genre have decided that I will like because it is meant for mass consumption. And I'm okay with that. I'm like, these things are here to entertain us and they're entertaining for a reason. So why be all uppity about what type of media you enjoy when you can just chill and have so much at your fingertips? Agreed. And it's something I realized too that reality TV, pop music, um, these things that become massive culture conversations I think the way we're talking about them is like how I hear my boyfriend talk about sports. It's like, yeah, it's like this thing that's deeply personal. Everyone has their team. Everyone knows the deep storylines. It's a way for us to connect immediately, have a conversation that's well beyond like, how's the weather looking? But we're not talking about ourselves. We also are like we're revealing things through our allegiances to these shows (laughs) and people without actually talking about ourselves. Oh, yeah. If you what's your allegiance? And if you could be on any reality TV show, what show would you pick? That's a good one. My this is going to sound crazy, but it would be married at first sight. No, I hate doing the legwork of dating. And I would rather be like, Mm -hmm. I trust experts and I trust people who are smarter than me. Although I one could say they have done a terrible job at matching these people. Not always. Yeah, that's right. Not always. So I'm like, maybe that would be fun. But other than that, I would love to be on like a Vanderpump Rules. Like mm-hmm. that would be my dream. Or a show with my sisters. That would be great. I would watch that in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. If it had, if it came to dating, I would pick Date My Mom over 90 Day Fiance. Oh, wow. Because my mom's got really good taste. And I think she would do a good job on those dates and would actually be able to find someone that I'm compatible with. Mm. I would not trust my mom whatsoever with that job. <laughs> Absolutely not. So I uh, I realized in trying to determine what my guilty pleasure was that it's definitely reality TV. And I don't want to label it a guilty pleasure because I strongly believe that pleasure is pleasure. Something I heard you say, actually. And that, you know, <laughs> let's remove the guilt because if you have something that you're enjoying, you should just fully enjoy it. Exactly. I realized that over the last 15 years... I've been lying. Every time someone asks me, what have you been watching? I immediately have to filter through all my thoughts and come up with the one show that I think is appropriate because all the (laughs) shows I am watching would make them consider me mm, guilty. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) So for the first time in 15 years, I want to answer the question and I'm answering it for all 15 years. Ready for this? Oh, so we have to ask you the question. Please do. I hate. So Jesse, what are you watching? Reality TV. Which shows? Well, Simple Life, Girls Next Door, Catfish, My Super Sweet 16, Next, True Life, Maid, Room Raiders, Pit My Ride, Date My Mom, Wife Swap, Pretty Wild, LA Inc., Laguna Beach, The Hills, The City, NYC Prep, Vanderpump Rules, Bachelor, Bachelorette, Bachelor in Paradise, Queer Eye, What Not to Wear, Project Runway, America's Next Top Model, Say Yes to the Dress, Rachel Zoe Project, Fashionista Diaries, Making a Model, The Face, Beauty and the Geek, American Idol, The Voice, So You Think You Can Dance, Dance Moms, Dancing Queen, Cheer, Cheer Squad, Last Chance You, Shark Tank, MasterChef, MasterChef Junior, Great British Baking Show, Selling Sunset, Flipping Out, Instant Hotel, Tidying Up with Marie Kondo, and RuPaul's Drag Race, a show for which I feel absolutely no guilt. But hands down, the show I feel the most guilt about and have kept hidden from many of my closest friends is Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Which is where you come in. That list is impressive. 
Thank you. Well done. Thank you very much. And I will say, I didn't Google anything for that. I sat down (gasps) and stream of consciousness tried to write out what came to mind. I just can't believe in that list. There was no before the 90 days, 90 day fiance, after the 90 days, happily ever after. That's you. That's your list. Honestly, it's like a travesty to me because there's hundreds and hundreds of hours of content and then Married at First Sight. I mean, it's just like the two that I've watched the most of somehow are non-existent. How funny to think that I have a guilty pleasure that I can list out. I don't know how many names that was, but still you want to shame me for not having watched your guilty pleasure. <laughs> yes, how, I will to... say Married at First Sight is prestige television. <laughs> that agree. show, I I really have to repent because I got into it late. I just started watching this season, but it is probably one of the best, most well done shows on television. It's spectacular. Jesse, you're hearing it from an expert, an actual professional in the field. And honestly, if Mariah tells me to watch something, I'm going to watch it. With that said, what is your favorite? It would have to be Vanderpump Rules. <gasps> yes. Because they have such rich history, the characters, the cast, they will never tire of storylines. And like Tom Sandoval will cry <laughs> at the drop of a hat and his emotions are so real and so raw that that really ties the show together for me. So Vanderpump Rules, so well done. It blends everything perfectly. Highly recommend. I love that one. Wow, Jesse's been telling me to watch that for years. So I love what you have said in the past about guilty pleasures. And I'm wondering if you could help our listeners who are struggling with answering honestly to the question, what have you been watching recently? I think just really look inside, especially now since we've had so much downtime and during the pandemic, so many of us, people who haven't, dip their toe into certain types of shows or reality TV or certain genres, like really take a look back at what you've enjoyed and what you've watched. Like there are reality shows like Married at First Sight that could go toe to toe with Succession or a show like that. Like that's how important I feel these programs are to Mm -hmm. society and how we, how we view our culture. Um, And I just think, be honest with yourself. There's no, to me, like, you said earlier pleasure is pleasure there's no such thing as a guilty pleasure if you enjoy it own it yeah what we're talking about to me parallels some of the disdain i get when i talk to people about how much i love video games and people are like oh video games are for like the the bias like video games are for lazy people like like somehow you just fall into a video game and like your life is gone (laughs) and like how could you be a, a, a productive person and it's the same thing with reality tv and the shows that i watch enrich my life it's not just that I get pleasure out of watching it because I think there's also the idea and you talk about it a little bit on your podcast the concept that people only watch reality tv to make themselves feel better I don't agree with that holistically I think I gain a lot out of like power dynamics understand like when I was on a set that was really difficult and it was all these power dynamics I didn't understand I got deep into survivor and I was watching it all the time and that was how I learned how to play the game on set of this particular situation with our power dynamics and I didn't know I didn't I was homeschooled for most of my life I missed out on a lot of the like gossip the backstabbing and so I was just you know new in town to this world <laughs> of, <laughs> of power dynamics and I needed to know what it was like you would do well on Survivor I don't actually think I'd do well on Survivor because I know exactly what would happen which would be I'd come across bossy um, because I can be in that situation, in particular on the challenges. I'd be bossy. I'd also, but I'd also be an asset. So people would be like, do we keep or do we not? (laughs) You know, and then I get maybe halfway through if I'm lucky and they'd be like, she's, she's too good at the challenges. We got it. Nix her. And I would have, and that's it. Do you remember? Oh, sorry. I'm steamrolling. Do you have something? The, uh, you're just in. Uh, it's amazing to I'm be in here. Heaven right I'm just now. like in the flow. I'm watching like a professional podcaster. I'm okay, just in great. awesome. Okay, great. Because yeah. I have so many more questions. I really She's need to She's glowing. Ask. And it's, I know we only amazing. have so much time, so I want to get them all in. Okay. So do you have a specific example of a keeping up with the continuity error that just sticks out to you and is like your favorite lollipop candy that you love thinking about? <laughs> My favorite is, it's not necessarily an error, but it's, I think I find this to be one of the more unfortunate side effects of what I do is I found out when Kylie Jenner conceived her baby. And you wrote that such a good piece about that. It's on the cut, right? Yes. It's yes. so good. I can't recommend it enough. I was 
sickened by my by myself because I couldn't <laughs> stop the research. Like, and I was like, "This is not okay, Mariah. You need to stop." At one point, you likened her to Walt Whitman. Yes. <laughs> and then later on, you talked about how your experience with Kylie's pregnancy was much like Dorothy's experience at, in Oz. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, can't recommend it enough. It's wonderful. Oh my god. Okay. Not mentioning Vanderpump Rules, Keeping Up with the Kardashians or 90 Day Fiance. Is there a show or a deep cut, it doesn't have to be current, that you want everyone to watch? Oh, absolutely. If you haven't watched Bravo's Gallery Girls, you need to go back to the archives and watch it. It's about these like 20 something year old women who are into like they work at art galleries or in New York. Own it's art in galleries New York. in New York. I have yes, this. it's great. It's great. It is the the characters are so rich and so dynamic. It only had one season, but it should it, I need a reboot so deeply. Everyone so should many watch it. of the best reality shows only survived one season, like Pretty Wild. Have you seen yes. Pretty Wild? Yes. I love Pretty Wild. These shows are iconic shows, but they're one and done. Yeah. If you're looking for something good to watch, research reality TV one season or failed reality TV show. You're probably going to love it. Yeah. You're going to love it. (laughs) Thank you so much for joining us, Mariah. This has been a thrill. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Mariah. Thank you for being a professional expert at reality TV. It's the best job ever. Thank you so much. It was lovely seeing you two. You too. Love you. Bye. Bye. (sighs) <sighs> I'm just loving this conversation so much. I feel like this was necessary. This is a hot button topic for us and something that we just talk about privately and sort of be able to make this our job today is a true thrill. This is a fun episode. Mm-hmm. I think people are really going to like this. Mm-hmm. And I, like I will it. read the comments and find out if they do. So please <laughs> let me know. Just say nice things. Please just say nice, nice things. So our second guest is our friend, Courtney McBroom, who is an incredible chef, food writer, and the founder of Ruin Table. She worked as culinary director at Momofuku Milk Bar in New York City and wrote the first three Milk Bar cookbooks. Courtney believes that what's best about food are the conversations, stories, and connections that happen while eating it. Her mission with Ruin Table is to create recipes and content to build community. She is also the founder and president of the Hot Dog Appreciation Club and our dear friend. Yay! Courtney! Yay! <laughs> We are here to talk about guilty pleasures. Um, When we asked our listeners about their guilty pleasures, the two topics by far were reality TV and food. So Mm. let's start with, do you have one? I unabashedly love all food, but I will say that I do have a guilty pleasure that kind of has to do with the fact that I work in food, which is a lot of times I'm just really tired of cooking so I order way, I spend an obscene amount of money on takeout. When did you first realize that you had this like quirky approach to food and that you could turn what other people would call junk food into like a special experience? I don't know that I've ever realized that. I think it's just so maybe a part of who I am. It was just me, you know, like, does a fish know it's in water? I, don't know. <laughs> I think really I just get bored easily. And so I try to figure <laughs> out other ways to do things. I know you also worked at um, Momofuku Milk Bar and wrote the Milk Bar recipes. I have always been kind of like just fascinated and in awe of some of the food that I've eaten from Milk Bar. The cereal milk specifically blew Mm -hmm. my mind. Just the idea of this thing that I grew up drinking out of a bowl at the end of my cereal, having that as like an ingredient in and of itself, I always thought was so cool. Are there any memories you have from that time of like developing recipes and realizing these cool things that you could include? So I started there right when they first opened, right when Christina first opened Milk Bar. And so I got in at just such a great time. It was like literally like experimenting with everything. It completely opened up my eyes to all sorts of different ways to use ingredients that I would never think to use. Making like a hot Cheeto ice cream by just putting hot Cheetos in an ice cream base and letting them like percolate, you know, I mean, but not every idea was good. I'm one time I made a barbecue, seeing a barbecue, I made a barbecue sauce, soft serve that did not go over well in the public. The world (laughs) wasn't ready for it. I don't know if the world will ever be ready for it, but I thought it was delicious. 
we just played around and experimented and like had some massive failures, but also clearly some massive successes. Yes. Do you feel like there's a connection between like guilty pleasures and food from our childhood? For sure. Yeah. Right? I think so, for sure. Like the things, I mean, part of it is because like growing up, we didn't have a ton of money and so we ate a lot of fast food and it was like, okay, you can get two tacos at Jack in the Box for 99 cents. And now like the idea of like going to like a fancy restaurant, I find that the times when it really hits something deeper, I'm like, I want more of this. It, it almost always connects back to like some like cheaper fast food version <laughs> that I had as a kid that was deeply satisfying. And now I'll just pay like way more for a fancy version of that, I guess. I fully agree. Eating at fancy restaurants is very fun, but it just doesn't hit quite the same as like a bag of tacos from wherever or queso or ice cream. I remember you were developing an ice cream and it was supposed to be like a dairy-free ice cream. So they were Mm. using pea protein, right? Yeah. Do you want to talk about those conversations you had? I didn't prep you for this. This wasn't emailed to you as a question, but I do love that story. It was in a meeting and this was like, corporate ice cream world because I as you know I'm also an ice cream consultant from time to time mm-hmm. yeah and so we're using pea protein to like create the dairy free base long story short we were going on and on and I it just came out of my mouth I referred to the flavor as penis I was like <laughs> it really brings out the penis <laughs> <laughs> meaning the pea the pea like taste the p-e-a-s-s Obviously, that's not how people heard it, because the issue is that we were worried about the the flavor of the penis coming through. (laughs) Was a big worry of ours, and we were trying to mask the penis. The penis, of course. You got to mask the penis. You got to mask the penis. You got to. Do you think that there are foods that we should feel guilty about? No. I think everything in moderation, especially moderation. Mm -hmm. And so if you enjoy eating something that's you like that's what you enjoy so like be proud of that and just eat it like something if it's for something to be pleasurable you can't have it all the time otherwise you'd get bored of it like with me and ice cream I don't ever eat ice cream anymore because I have to do eat it for work so like that's not really a pleasure of mine but like if you enjoy eating something and you find it pleasurable eat it until you don't find it pleasurable anymore and don't be ashamed about it I think that's healthy yeah that's very helpful. We've got one big question to oh, ask. Oh, yeah. Yep. So we're so, one of the reasons why we're so excited to have you today, you know, at the very beginning of this podcast journey is because this podcast was sort of started by this question that has plagued us, our group text, for a year now. Uh, and we feel like you are honestly the expert on this, being the president of the Hot Dog Appreciation Club. So is the hot dog a sandwich? Yes. Definitively, yes, a hot dog is a sandwich. It is. You, you were both not agreeing with me. I can tell. I don't know why we tossed the question to her and we were like, whatever she says. And then we're like, we we don't like these results. I don't like authority. Oh, what are you, the hot dog authority? Who, do you, who makes you the president? You? But it is a sandwich because it's between... I believe you were talking about the Earl of Sandwich last oh, time. I, yes, I knew that this was, I, I knew this was going to come back and bite uh, us in the butt. Yeah. What I was knew it? it. He liked to put his meat between two buns, right? He no, did. between two pieces of bread. Yeah, don't be weird. <laughs> <laughs> but wouldn't you argue that the bun of a hot dog creates two pieces of bread? If okay. I rip it in half. Yeah, this is the thing. This is where it gets really contentious because what we are talking about here is it's a razor's edge literally of the the the, what the two hot dog buns are being connected by (laughs) if there's any tear okay but also why does there have to be a tear why did the why does the bread have to be separated why can't it be conjoined if you put a bunch of hummus in a pita do you call that a sandwich yes okay oh it was so nice having you on the podcast (laughs) thank you courtney you've completely blown up everything i've known about reality But I believe we have settled the question, correct? A hot dog is a sandwich. I just want listeners to know that we've actually brought this to Courtney multiple times. And we're acting like this is the first time we've thought to bring this to Courtney. We've argued about this solidly four times before doing this on the pod. Look, 
Our podcast is called Learning Lots. The goal is to bring on experts whom we accept no more than we do. Well, so maybe today... we accept. <laughs> <laughs> and so today, I will, with clenched teeth, accept that our food expert is saying that a hot dog is a sandwich. Oh. So there you go. There you go, wow. folks. If you've been following along for a year now. I think I'm finally accepting the dark no, side. I'm and I just feel like I'm just like shaking out here in the cold. You're going to stick to it? Well, who else is? I feel really great now about the whole hot dog thing. Well, I don't. <laughs> Nothing changed for you. One thing that's changed for Courtney is that she's now been able to say that publicly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah we, and we're glad that you've had the opportunity on the pod to. to yeah. Thank you. Put your flag in the. In the bun. In the bun <laughs> on that one. Respectfully disagree, but. Um, that's one of the great things about friendship is that you can disagree on things and still be friends. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that nice? Agree to disagree. <laughs> I agree that it's okay to agree to disagree, but I don't agree to disagree. Sure. I would like to say <laughs> that I love you so much and I'm so grateful. We love you. I love you. I love both of you so much. Thank you for having me. It was really fun. Love you. Thank you. Bye. Whoo. All right. What a doozy this was. I'm fulfilled, mind, body, and soul. I'm I'm excited to bask in the glory of all of these guilty pleasures, and I feel less bad. You do? Yeah. What, do you feel worse? No. Yeah. I don't. Interesting, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, let's do some guilty stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I'm into it. I really loved watching how um, eloquent Mariah can speak about reality TV. It mm -hmm. made me realize that... Maybe if I just approach it with more of an academic point of view, I might look down on it a little bit less. I don't know. I try not to be pretentious. I feel like the majority of the time that I'm talking in an interview or even on this podcast, I'm thinking, sound smart, don't be pretentious. Sound smart, don't be pretentious. <laughs> it was such a pleasure to talk about these things. And um, I loved getting to hear more about the people that we love around us and their guilty pleasures as well. Yes. I'm learning that nothing's that weird. No. Hey. Thanks so much for doing this with me today. Oh, thank you for doing this with me. It was it was amazing. I saw a side of you because I can't speak the language of the Kardashians, so I felt like I got to see you in your element. It's like when I'm witnessing you speaking French and I'm just here. Oui, bien know? sûr. Merci. Merci. Jessie? Uh, I'd like to thank all of our listeners for spending this time with us. I hope you enjoyed this episode and have a good rest of your day. Yep, or evening. Whatever time it is, it's all good. Bye. Learning lots, learning lots. Bree and Jesse are learning lots. Learning lots with Bree and Jesse.